Sonia from Island Sun Tarot. Welcome to part one of my bookshelf tour. I'm keeping on with the trend of something a little different that I don't normally do on this channel, but after the book unhaul, I thought this would be fun and to share, share some books and talk about some books, recommend some books. And as with my other video, after seeing some of these books, if you have any book recommendations, I would love to see them in the comments below. Let's get started. So this is part one of two because my other bookshelf is in the bedroom and I wanted to spend some time talking about some of these books and to give each one a little bit of time so that I wasn't rushing through. So hopefully this won't be too, too terribly long as we kind of have a little chat. Let's start up here because I've already talked about a lot of these books in some of my monthly favorites. So this is the first one. This is the series The Last Kingdom by Bernard Cornwell. I have been reading the series over the last year or so because I had to wait for some of these ones to come out on new release, but this has also been made into a Netflix show that I think I've recommended before. It's called The Last Kingdom. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. If you love historical fiction because some of these characters were real people in real life. A lot of the things that were happening were actually have actually happened. And Bernard Cornwell does a wonderful job blending the two together, creating his own characters mixed with characters that actually existed and things that actually happened for a wonderful, compelling story. And I have to say, the battle sequences from these books are amazing. Amazing. So great to read. And you don't ever feel like lost or confused. Sometimes when I'm reading battle scenes, I'm like, wait, 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 who was that? You, you, you kind of start to get a little lost. Like you're reading too fast because you want to know what happens. I don't really feel that with this. This is real clear and it is very exciting. And oh, I just, I love, I love Uhtred. He's such an amazing character. And there are many amazing characters within this book, but Uhtred is the main character. And you would find this out if you just read the back of the first book or... Um, looked at the description of the show. As a young child, he is taken by Vikings that have invaded Great Britain, and he is then raised by them. So he's a, a Saxon raised as a, you know, Norse or, you know, Danish warrior. And it's interesting the conflict that he goes through in his life and where his loyalties really lie and what he's striving for in his life. So, yes, <laughs> That's the rest of the series. If you do watch the show, it ended up being about, so the first two books are the first season, right? So then the next two, third, fourth, they're just did their fifth season finished filming I saw on Instagram. So that should be coming out, I'm pretty sure in 2022, I mean, fingers crossed. But that would be Warriors of the Storm and the Flame Bearer. This one actually goes on the end. Didn't get that in hardback. Anyways, excellent series. If you're into that historical fiction time, let me see just real fast. Cause some people, I'm funny about like time frames, like certain time frames I don't really appreciate. So it starts off in, oh, and then the other thing that's really awesome with these books is they always give like a little map. I think that's always helpful. Um, so it starts off Northumbria, AD 866, year 866. So awesome series. That's all of these here. Let's go, I guess we should go across. Then I have all the illustrated versions that have come out so far of the Harry Potter books. So after the first three, they were doing one a year for the first three. And I totally understand that Goblet of Fire is like an extra long book. <laughs> It's huge and there's lots of details but it took him two years to get this one out so again it was going to be another two years to get the fifth one out so fingers crossed for that we'll see but it would be nice to have the whole series for this and I always thought if I read through these with my kids the illustrated version might be a little bit more compelling compared to just reading the regular books and then when we do the second bookshelf tour we'll blip over the whole series that I have there classic right and then I have the Lord of the Rings, this is the one volume edition where they're all together and has the large appendix in the back. The Hobbit, uh, the boy, the mole, the fox, and the horse. This, I love this. Okay, so the boy, the mole, the fox, and the horse. It's kind of like um, little poems 
mixed in with the artwork like this is how it starts hello and that, that's the mole talking to the little boy so then as you go through he meets these other characters and it's just a really sweet story you fell but i've got you i just i love the ones with the horse right tears fall for a reason and they are your strength not weakness so it's just a really sweet little book kind of like a i guess like a coffee table book that you probably keep out all right, then as we move over here, let's start on the end. So I have Clamlands. I've definitely recommended this in one of my monthly favorites. Excellent book. I only read this because of Outlander. It was given to me as a gift and I absolutely loved it. I love, love, really, I guess the passion is Ireland, technically, if I really think about it. I would love to visit Ireland, but Scotland and England is like right up there with Ireland and just an excellent read. These two are priceless together. Um, Sam Hewen and Graham McTavish. So excellent book. And they also had their um, Men in Kilts show that kind of went with it. So this is one of the only books on this shelf that I haven't read. It's probably a travesty, but I've tried several times. I really just feel like you have to be in the right frame of mind to start something like this. Anyways, it's Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. I've tried several times, but I think it's just like taking you back to that style writing. It's hard to get into when you've been reading other things that are a little bit more present or easier to read through. So this is always on my to be read list, Wuthering Heights. Someday, right? Someday. Then I have Jane Eyre, one of my favorites, Sense and Sensibility, Pride and Prejudice, and Sandington. Sandington, um, I'm pretty sure I mentioned this in a favorites as well because I had read this one. This was a novel by Jane Austen that she never finished upon her passing. So several different authors have picked it up and finished. I'm pretty sure she finished the first 12 or 14 chapters. I could be wrong. So that is the part that is the same in both of these books. And it was a TV show on um, PBS, the Masterpiece Classics. And for the TV show, they followed one version. Besides the TV show, there were three others, so I've read two. So it's interesting to see how these authors picked up her story and how they ran with it. So I definitely recommend both of those. I have another classic here, Alice in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. This is fun. So I originally read the first three books of the Game of Thrones series in high school. And I'm pretty sure, mm, gosh, I think I was either a junior or senior, and I had finished the first three and I had to wait for the fourth one to come out. And that was the last one that was, like it came out in good timing compared to when the other three were written. And then it was a good <laughs> four or five years until the fifth one came out. And now here we are, it's been 10 years and I really don't think we should hold our breaths for the sixth one. Anyways, the interesting about this one is, I got it at a used bookstore ghost on the back and it's actually an original like the artwork is the original artwork from the first printing and if you can believe it these books were actually printed in 1996 so I kept this copy even though I got rid of all my other copies just because of the cover art so I think this is like one if okay maybe like one of five books that I've kept even though I probably could have gotten rid of it then I have Brokeback Mountain and The Great Gatsby. Both of these I kept. Some of these actually, Jane Eyre, Pride and Prejudice. A lot of these I kept because it was a favorite that I've done um, projects or reports on in school. So I just, I couldn't bring myself to get rid of the book. This one, oh gosh. So in my unhaul, I talked about The Starless Sea. This is the other book by that author, Erin Morgenstern. It's called The Night Circus. This book, <sighs> be still my heart. I mean... This was recommended to me by a friend and really I was at work and I was on lunch and I was reading a book and he was like, oh my gosh, you're reading that. If you like that, you should read. And he gave me like a whole list of books to read. This was one of them. And oh my gosh, did he just like hit the nail on the head? He totally knew. This book is so amazing. It is so great. So you have a very, you know, very fantasy type of magic that a um, heroine and hero can do. They're almost competing with each other with their magic and the rooms or the worlds that they can create with it. And it's just oh, it's so beautifully written. And it's in a circus setting, which is really fun. 
and I just I love it. I feel like this is the really like fantasy and magic version of The Greatest Showman and Water for Elephants like <laughs> all mixed into one. So um, The Night Circus by Erin Mor Morgenstern. I would recommend this book to anyone. Like if anybody's asking me, hey, any books, this is definitely one of the first ones I always say. So The Night Circus. Oh, this is totally a guilty pleasure read. And you know what? I don't have um, Bridgerton on here, but I know I shared it for favorites. I lent it to my mom. This is 365 Days and it's a movie on Netflix. I don't know what else I should say, but uh, it's, it was excellent. I wanted to see what the book was like because of the show. And I like to do that with movies or shows to read the book to see how the author really intended for it to go versus how they translated it into a movie or show. And this is absolutely excellent. And it's translated from Polish. So yes, Polish. Yes, Polish. And so um, a couple, like a little bit of it, like might seem a little formal, but I think that's just how it translates over. But man, I blitzed through, through this. This was so good. So, you know, if you like a little romance that's a little steamy, this is a good one. Okay, should we just come back down here? So I know I've shared, sorry, my feet are falling asleep. Um, I've shared the Green Rider series before. So it's about um, King's Messenger Service and they have um, magic, you know, brooch that they can, brooch, excuse me, I don't know how they came out weird, <laughs> brooch. <laughs> and so each brooch has a different type of magic. And so they're summoned, really. They're summoned by the magic in the brooch that's calling to them to become a green rider, a messenger for the king. And then upon the call from the brooch, they are paired with a horse. And the horse also has magic as well. This was recommended to me by a friend. And for years and years, I always wanted to read it, but I just felt like there were so many other things that I was reading. I was like, oh, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. This is amazing. I know I've recommended several of these on my favorites. So as right now, I've read the first five. We have Green Rider, um, First Rider's Call, The High King's Tomb, Black Veil, and Mirror Sight. So these two I haven't read yet. So I'm on the sixth one, which would be Firebrand. I think I'm going to read it next. But um, it turned out that the, sorry, the window's open because I wanted the good light. There we go. It turned out that these first five that I got were actually the UK editions. So they all kind of have this like Da Vinci style, like Pegasus, flying horse, which is interesting to me because there are, well, I guess one of the horses, one of the like ethereal horses has wings, but for the most part, none of the horses have wings. So I thought that artwork was kind of interesting. So I was happy when I found these on hardback to see this other artwork. This one I just picked up the other day. And when I walked into Barnes and Noble and I saw how big it was, <laughs> I told my kids like, I'm not carrying that around the store. So let's go look and we'll come back for it. So I'm really excited for this. So this is supposed to be the conclusion to the series. Winter light. All right. I think I'll still just go across. Okay, so this I'm reading right now, and I'll come back to it. I'll just leave the cover. So all of these are by Lee Bardugo. Um, they're technically young adult fantasy. These are some more that were recommended by that same friend that recommended uh, Night Circus. So we have the Shadow and Bone series, which was also made into a Netflix show. Really, really excellent. And... Um, fun, super in intriguing, and also fast-paced. Mm, I guess it's hard to say because some of these are a little slower, but like sometimes, especially with fantasy series, if it's a little too slow moving for me, it just really doesn't hold my interest anymore. Like something needs to happen. We need to have like some movement, some intrigue, some drama, something. It, there doesn't have to always be romance. That's nice, but I don't need that in a fantasy book. But this has enough of everything to where it is a good balance through the whole book and it's very diverse and you fall in love with a lot of the characters. That's hard for me to admit because normally I only like like one maybe two characters and um, they might kind of grow on me eventually but for the most part 
me loving or liking a character is rough. So for me to say that. <laughs> so then uh, after, I guess I should say that I actually read um, Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom first. So I went back and read Shadow and Bone, and I honestly think you can do it either way. Like, I wouldn't sit here and be like, you have to read Shadow and Bone first. No, it doesn't matter. Uh, my friend that had recommended The Night Circus, he actually recommended Six of Crows, and he told me that I could read it first and that there was another one, but he liked this one better. I was like, that's cool. I'll just go with what you said because that other book was so awesome. And um, yeah, it doesn't make a difference. So if you want to read Six of Crows first, I would. If I had to pick out of the two, I would say that Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom, it's a duology, um, are just a little bit more of my favorite, but Shadow and Bone and that whole trilogy is also a favorite as well, if, if God, if that makes any sense, sorry. And so then off of those two series, the next duology that she did was King of Scars. I have to show this one because when this came out, I was just so excited to pick up the hardback. And when I went to the store and I got it, I was just so surprised. So it's got this gold foil. Oh, okay. So the embossing on it is stunning. Just really gorgeous. And I did not expect that. You rarely get a super like nice version. I know it's the first edition, but still. So King of Scars, you're following some of the characters that were in the other books. It's just continuing on in the story. And then earlier this year, Rule of Wolves came out, and so I got the hardcover, and oh gosh, the same thing. I almost like expected it, but I didn't want to like hope. Just really, really gorgeous, and both of these books were excellent. And um, I'm almost starting to appreciate King of Scars and this duology a little bit more than Six of Crows, hard to say. So then by the, those are technically all YA. Um, this one, it has a nice embossing on it too, gosh. Okay, so this is was her first into the like adult fantasy series and it was, it was a little trippier than I'm used to. So it's Ninth House by the same author, Lee Bardugo. And this again was the first edition and it's got this amazing like, I don't know if you'll even be able to see it like, pressed into the book, sort of compass, and then the snake carries on on the inside, front and back cover. It's just really cool. So this one was interesting because um, the main character Alex is sought after because of some death that she has witnessed and come across that she can see ghosts and so she's wanted at uh is it oxford no yale Ugh, sorry she's wanted at yale so she becomes a part of this secret society and it kind of becomes a thriller and a little bit of a mystery and i will admit at first alex was a little rough around the edges for me and i wasn't sure how i appreciated her as a character and i didn't know how she was going to like um grow as a character what her arc was going to be but the book itself was so intriguing and the path that she was on was so bizarre compared to other things that i've read that that was what kept me going and then by the end of the book i absolutely just loved all the characters so she's writing the second one right now so ninth house leave our go this is totally guilty pleasure. I know I've mentioned it before, Vampire Diaries. I've been, well, we've been working our way through the show, my boyfriend and I, and I think we're finally on the eighth season or almost to the end. Um, but I wanted to see how the books actually went because I had read online that there were a lot of differences and it was actually really good. It is YA fantasy, so it's a little easier to read. You can see like the prints just a little bigger. And yeah, I blazed through this. It was so much fun. I gobbled it up. Next, we have one of my most favorite series ever. So it's Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson. So this series is as if the bad guy had won and what the world was like after. You know, the depression of it, the um, upper class just completely taking over. Well of Ascension is the second one. 
So we follow a young girl named Vin through the series. The magic system in this is very interesting. A true mistborn can consume any type of metal and each type of metal gives them a different type of power that they can use. And then um, they're very rare and they've been killed off a lot of them. So these are the type of warriors that they need in order to defeat this evil that has taken over their land. And um, I think out of everything that I'm going to share for this two-part series of my bookshelf tour, this is one of the books that made me sob, absolutely sob the most, <laughs> as if that's a category. Oh, book recommendations, books that made me cry. But really, it's just, it was so, so good. And this was another one that was recommended to me by my wonderful friend at work. And I don't know what I was doing my whole life without the series. So I have actually a lot of Brandon Sanderson books on my to read list, to be read list. So Miss Born series. This one I had just finished. And I mentioned it on a favorites again, The Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynn. So this was one of those ones that like, you know, 125 pages in, I'm really only starting to appreciate one of the three characters that you're following because it's that format where each chapter is, you know, one of the characters. So you're jumping around. And if you don't appreciate each of the characters, you're kind of like, ugh, you know, struggling through those other chapters to get back to the one that you really appreciate. But my goodness, I, like three quarters of the way through, I almost couldn't put it down. Well, I had to because I have, you know, children to feed and animals to take care of, but I didn't want to put it down is the point. And it was just so, so amazing. I cannot wait for the next one. It's supposed to be a trilogy. And I found out after looking into it a little bit after my last favorites video that the second one is actually set to come out in April, 2022. So I think I'm going to just pre-order it because I've already loved it so, so much. And, um, that unsurety that you feel about some of the characters all comes to fruition at the end when you are greatly rewarded with sticking with them. And um, it's it's quite, quite good. So Shadow of the Gods, I know I've already mentioned it. And same thing with Half Sick of Shadows. This was a debut novel by this um, author. This was one of the first books that I got from the Book of the Month. And actually I didn't order, I haven't ordered anything from Book of the Month since then. I thought that you could go back and order some of the older books, but no, you have to pick one of the five that they're, you know, giving for the month, and then you can add on something else. So I had something else that I wanted to read, but I couldn't buy it because I didn't want to pick anything from each of the months. So I finally picked something from the October selection, and then I got an extra. I'm still waiting for them to come in the mail. That whole, you know, Hawaii thing. I order a book of the month within the first three or four days of October, and I won't be getting it until the 30th. So we'll see. Anyways, Half Sick of Shadows. This is a uh, story of Arthur by the Lady Charlotte um, from her view. And it's just, I love Arthur retellings. And it's interesting how, because she's a seer, so there's a lot of jumping around, past, present, futures that may or may not come to pass. But this author did an extremely beautiful job blending it all together where you don't feel lost and the characters are uh, deep and really this is a, a, like an emotional book it's not there is some action and stuff but it's not like edge of the sea blood gore battle it's you're emotionally involved with these characters and you want you need to see how it unfolds so half stick of shadows Okay, let's jump down here. I'm going to do this one last one here so I won't forget. So I have the Wayfarer Redemption. I actually reread these at the beginning of COVID <laughs> last year. And it was a reread for me. I started these in high school. And even when I read them in high school, I think I made it through the first four before I had to wait for the last couple to come out. So we have book one, which is Wayfarer Redemption. So... This is amazing because the fantasy world that you're living in is called, um, well, it, it goes through many different names. Let me just say that there's a race of people called the Ikari, and so they have giant wings, and they some of them may or may not have a certain magic, and it's the classic um, killing off of all beings that have magic and suppressing them and wanting to rebuild the empire, humans only, 
nothing else. And the other thing that's interesting is they hate forests. So the humans know that the forests and the trees carry magic and it's deep and it runs deep in the land. And so they have destroyed many of the forests because of the magic held within. So it's the waiting for the star man to save them. So we have Enchanter is the second one. These characters, like, I've loved many a character, I can admit, but <sighs> Axis in this is he becomes, you know, he is the star man. He is spectacular. There's no way that, that you could not appreciate him and love him. So those are the first three. And then um, we have Sinner, which is the fourth one. You can see here she's got the, the wings. And then Crusader. So these six all, you know, same characters. And oh my goodness. And then Pilgrim is the last. So those first six books were, you know, Wayfarer Redemption series. And then the author, excuse me, Sarah Douglas, I forgot to say. I'll, I'll just do it after. Sorry. She did another like spin-off series. And when I got the series, just because I appreciated the author, I didn't think it was going to be this because it, the series is called Dark Glass Mountain. Wait. Yeah, Dark Glass Mountain. <laughs> Sorry. And it's a trilogy. And it turns out it's actually hand in hand with the whole way for redemption so to me the way for redemption is six books and then we have this add-on of the three so we have the serpent bride the twisted citadel and the infinity gate sarah douglas she's just so captivating and definitely one of those ones where it just sucks you in and you don't want to put it down and that brings me to i'm going to skip over a shelf um, cause I had mentioned in my last favorites, I had started this blaze through it. It was amazing. It was a reread. So by Sarah Douglas, Hades daughter. And, um, you start off in ancient Greece. There's sort of a, um, magical spell that ties a lot of the characters together cause they're going to be reborn. So I had said it was like a time travel in the sense, not time travel, but you know, you're with those same characters. So I'm getting ready to shortly pick up the second one, which is God's concubine. So they go from ancient Greece to England, I'm pretty sure around the same time, so 1065, so a couple hundred years later than those, but this is like, you know, England when it was called Albion, so. And then Dark Witch Rising is the third one, another time jump here, and then you can see even by the front of this color, cover another time jump. So within the first book, even though you're in ancient Greece, you are jumping forward to 1939 and you're seeing a little snippet. It's literally just like a page and a half, maybe two pages of these characters in 1939. So you're seeing how this story is starting to evolve and the time that it's going to take to defeat this evil within the labyrinth that ends up being underneath the town of London. So, oh, just so good. Definitely one of those ones that you just can't put down. Okay, stick with me. We're almost to the end of this one. So another one that I just absolutely love is Rhapsody. So I had unhauled some of these books because I have them all on hardback now. So this is the first one I was holding up. I believe it was the second one, Prophecy. But this is the first book, Rhapsody. These are by Elizabeth Hayden. And this first book was very interesting. This was recommended to me by a friend and they're traveling underground from continent to continent and it's interesting what they're going through together so she's traveling with Ahmed and Gunther and their <laughs> friendship and like the camaraderie between the three of them is awesome it's so good I love them all so so much so we have Rhapsody Prophecy is the second one Destiny is the third. We see, start to see the hero in some of the front of these. This, that's Ash. Requiem for the Sun is the fourth one. The Assassin King is the fifth. 
And then Elegy for a Lost Star is a sixth. So there are, I believe, two more of these now. When I reread this series all the way through, I'll probably pick up the seventh and eighth one. And I honestly had no idea that the story was still going. But this is definitely high fantasy. High fantasy. It's its own world. There's a total, you know, map in the beginning. And, you know, I have to admit, sometimes it can get a little bit confusing with the lands and the names and stuff. But this one isn't so expansive that you can't easily understand it and still enjoy the story. Okay, two more series. So this was another I was curious after seeing the John Carter of Mars movie that came out a while ago now. But these are by Edgar Rice Burroughs and they were written in the late 1800s, which is actually shocking. So he's quite the um, like grandfather of fantasy fiction, sci-fi. So this is a Princess of Mars, the first in the series when he first goes to Mars. And then we have the gods of Mars, warlord of Mars. And then this one actually has three books in it, or no, two. Fubia, Maid of Mars, and The Chessmen of Mars. So the series goes on. I only have these five books, technically. The uh, Because they're such old stories, they're actually hard to come by. So these ones were republished when that movie had first come out, and they were easy to come by. But by the time I finished these, they didn't have the rest of the series. And I'm pretty sure this series is, I want to say eight or nine books long of course it's probably not going to be in the beginning no not on that one but oh my gosh these are so good if you his writing is a little almost like picking up pride and prejudice or you know that that style of writing like how i meant um trying to read wuthering heights several times if you aren't in that like frame of mind, or if you're not willing to at least just read through the first couple chapters, let your brain adapt to how he writes. It's it's formal. It's really formal. But they are so, so good. I actually really loved the movie. I wish they would have done more. Sadly, they didn't. But the books are excellent. And his love for, you know, the, the princess it's just so pure and beautiful and he's spectacular and some of, he really writes the fight sequences and the monsters on Mars really really awesome it really takes you there it makes you feel like you're sitting there with that monster you're with John Carter fighting and then last but not least I've definitely mentioned these before this is my beloved copy that's like totally you know you just like <laughs> I can't bring myself to get rid of it but it is Exiles the Runes of Ambri I know I've mentioned this before. I did a little blip about it when I did my unhaul, but um, in this um, society, it's actually the women that rule. <laughs> so everything is passed down to the daughters. The magic can be passed down to the daughters. And um, when the daughters marry and when sons are married off, they want their sons married into a prominent family, prominent family name. And uh, as I've mentioned before, these have not been finished and I would love to see this trilogy completed by this author. I really don't want to hold my breath and think that it's going to happen, the Mageborn Trader, but it's just excellent. So you're following three sisters that they're they've been separated and their lives have taken them on different paths. And it's interesting to see how they grow and evolve and as their lives start to come back together as it's like that um, they're being reintroduced to each other. So, really excellent series by Melanie Ron. I've made a total mess of the bottom shelf, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so this last one that I'm going to mention, I saved the paper, because I'm still reading it right now, so I always take the dust jackets off. I am going to mention this book again, so you're probably going to be tired of hearing about it uh, for my monthly favorites, and I might even do a separate review. That's how much I love it. So, it's The Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. So if you are going to get this book, I would recommend to get this Barnes & Noble limited edition one because it has some illustrations in it. And oh, so it kind of shows you throughout the book. You can see here like 
all the illustrated ones within. So for this one, there is a, he's a silver saint or a vampire hunter. He's actually considered um, a pale blood, which is half vampire. So all the saints of the order, they're all half vampires because it gives them that edge to be able to hunt regular vampires. The way that this author has gone about his style of vampire is absolutely spectacular. And it's like, if a vampire bites somebody and that person is now dead, did they rise immediately? So they're in that same form of when they passed or did they lay rotting for weeks on end and now they're more of that sort of like zombie style vampire. So there's different degrees of vampires in this and how they turn and they can't choose when they turn a vampire. So if a vampire was in love with a mortal and they chose to turn them, they don't know if it was going to work. If they bit that person, that person died, would they wake up immediately? They don't know. They have no choice over it. So that's really interesting. And then also the character is just utter perfection when it comes to characters for me. And his name's Gabriel. It's the main character there. And the premise that you would get, even if you just looked on the inside flap of this, is that it's been 27 years since the last day where there was sun. And he is the last silver saint, which is a vampire hunter, and he has been captured. He is awaiting his death in jail, and um, his story needs to be chronicled. So the queen, who is a vampire, sends um, Jean-Francois a vampire to chronicle Gabriel's story. So it's interesting how he wants to go about telling the story and how the vampire that's chronicling it wants him to go about it. So even though he's going back in time to tell his story, you get that banter in between of him and the vampire, which is very interesting because he is very powerful and he's killed so many vampires. And so they're kind of catty and sarcastic, but I just, I love it so, so, so much. And uh, the author is already working on the second one and I just cannot wait. So I saw a review of this by The Book Refuge. And I will share the video below because uh, let me just say, I've never gone into the dark fantasy section to buy a book. And this is where that book was, the dark fantasy section. And that could be dark based on um, death and gore, um, blood, you know, that kind of dark fantasy. Also intertwined with the rating on it, almost like if you were gonna watch a movie PG versus R. So I would definitely say that it has that factor, but I'm going to link the review below because if you want to read this and you want to see a little bit more about it, she did an excellent, excellent review and I went and picked up the book the next day. But I will say that the author sent a copy to Joseph Morgan. He plays Klaus or Niklaus in the Vampire Diaries and the originals. So he's supposed to be, you know, the original vampire. And that actor posted it on Instagram one day. And I think he got sent an early copy because when I looked it up when he had shared it, it wasn't out yet. And so then when I saw the Book Refuge um, review, I was like, oh, I got to get it. So this was the copy that she was sharing. So I don't know what the regular copy looks like because this is the Barnes & Noble exclusive one that has the illustrations in it. So the reason why the illustrations are important is because the um, jean Francois that's um, chronicling the story sketches while Gabriel's telling. So the sketches are from the vampire um, as the story is being told. So it's nice to have that element that just really adds to the story. 
but the author writes so vividly that you could picture it without the illustrations. So if you're unable to come across this copy, I don't know if the regular ones have the illustrations or not. So anyways, Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. Um, I'm probably gonna gush about this book again in my favorites, so I'm, I'm sorry in advance, but there you have it guys. Thank you, thank you so much for sticking with me through this part one of my bookshelf tour. And if you've read any of these books, please comment below. Let me know what you thought. I would love to see how you felt about any of these. And then also based on these books, if you wanna recommend anything, that would be great. So go ahead and pop it in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.